In places all across Metro Detroit, there are relics from the Cold War literally hiding in plain sight. Yeah, the Nike missile system was designed to protect major cities like Detroit from ballistic missile or air attacks. And to say it was complex is putting it mildly. Grant Herms is live in Riverview tonight with a really cool history lesson that's right beside you there, Grant. <laughs> yeah, it is and towering over me here. So missiles just like these were all across our neighborhoods. In fact, this one here in Riverview, they were in a magazine in a soccer field that is just behind me here. And there were more than a dozen of these sites all across Metro Detroit, a part of our missile defense. Nestled into quiet places that are now parks, preserves, and even the airport are remnants of fears mostly forgotten but now rekindled with the war in Ukraine, grown over sites with little signs left of the weapons housed underground to protect Detroit. Metro Detroit was home to 16 different sites of these Nike tactical missiles in places like Union Lake, Rouge Park, and even Belle Isle. The missiles would be aimed at incoming nuclear bombers and later long range nuclear missiles themselves. This is what's left of the Nike site on Belle Isle. This radio tower and one just over to my left, they would get word from radar that that bomber was coming in. They would then send word from here across to Belle Isle where they would launch the Nikes that would streak over the city of Detroit to intercept that incoming missile. The idea was pretty simple. The missiles had a specific range they could cover and those ranges overlapped, making a shield of nuclear weapons to protect some of the country's most important factories and industrial places responsible for creating military equipment during the Cold War, shown in this civil service training video from 1960. Three eyes connected by electronic brain cells and nerves across several thousand yards. Steve Brozak is a historian at the Selfridge Air National Guard Base Air Museum and one of the state's top experts on what were then called Nike Ajax and later Nike Hercules missiles. Originally it was the Nike Ajax, which was a shorter range rocket that would go up, uh, reach an altitude and could be command directed to explode. So when they sensed the, the missile was getting close to the target, they can set it off on the ground, it would explode. <laughs> The missiles in Detroit were also some of the most important in the country, not just because they protected factories, but also because they were some of the closest to the Soviet Union. The shortest route between Russia and the United States is over the, the uh, North Pole, across Canada, into uh, a northern part, northern tier states of the United States. But by the early 1970s, the missile program was deemed obsolete after the Soviet Union stopped using bombers and started using more advanced missiles. The sites were demolished, leaving little trace and sometimes none at all of the fearful arms they once housed. Now, these missiles could have either conventional or nuclear warheads on them, and some of the 265 missile sites did have nukes on them at all these places around the country. Now, Steve says not to worry. None of the places around here, Jason, had nuclear warheads on them at any time. But Back boy, it really is incredible because we always knew we were probably close to these things, and we never really knew how close we were. Uh, Grant, yeah. with the Nikes decommissioned, what, what's there in, in their place now? Yeah, so after that missile change with the Russians, they went from the bombers to those ICBM style missiles. Detroit really wasn't on the front lines anymore, so we switched to those Minutemen missiles, the ones that we mostly think of that are housed in the western states underground. Those were short lived, and now our nuclear missiles are on boats and ships and submarines out in the oceans, and those get launched into orbit. We've got a lot more in the history and kind of what happened after these Nike missiles on a much longer story up on clickondetroit.com and Local 4 Plus right now. Yeah, check In it review, out. Grant Herms, Local 4. Good stuff, Grant. Yeah. We appreciate it. Hopefully, just like we always thought back then, hopefully we don't ever have to use those things. Right? Fascinating, though. Really cool, yeah. yeah.